Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Still Heights Baptist Church for our online worship service. So glad you could join us this morning. We are looking forward to leading you in worship, and we trust that God will do His work in our hearts and our minds today. Well, to prepare us for worship, our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 9. Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2. Hear the word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we bless you, and we pray, God, that you would take these words of our mouths, Lord, the meditations of our heart, and that they would be pleasing in your sight. You are our rock, and you are our redeemer, and you are our Lord. We bless you, Lord Most High. Amen. Rises, we will. 
I remember in my childhood singing a hymn in church written by Samuel J. Stone called The Church's One Foundation. He wrote this hymn in 1866 as one of the 12 published in 12 hymns on the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. At the time of its publication, Stone was a young priest at New Windsor, Windsor Parish Church, a poor district in Oxford, England. The Church's One Foundation speaks specifically to Article 9 of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Catholic or Worldwide Church, the communion of saints. It's based on 1 Corinthians 3.11. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. The lyrics of the first verse say, The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Church family, we are a new creation in Jesus, the church's foundation. He came, lived, died, and rose again to set us free from sin and shame. What a gift, what a blessing. Let's pray together as his church. Lord Jesus, we are your church. We praise you for who you are, the one and only foundation of the church. We thank you for coming to show us how to live and how to love. Forgive us for neglecting to give you the glory for the wonderful things you have shown us and done for us. For you are the provider, the healer, the conquering king. We are sorry for lifting ourselves up in pride instead of looking to you as our source of every good thing. We pray for each part of our church family, our children, our youth, our young adults, our older adults, our seniors, that each part in their own way would faithfully show love to a hurting world. We remember your words, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Help us to keep our eyes focused on you so that we can follow your lead and respond to your call of love. We come before you today in need of your power and strength. Some of us may be in a season of celebration, 
Some may have been granted employment. Some have had new additions to their family. Some are celebrating significant milestones. Thank you for all these things and help us not to take these things for granted. You are our great provider and sustainer. You know, Lord Jesus, that we are in a season of brokenness, but your promises hold. You are with us. You will never leave us. We pray for those who are sick, grieving, or brokenhearted. O oh Lord of mercy, grant them healing, peace, and hope. You are the source of all these things. Through our own struggle and pain, help us to use your words to offer comfort and give strength to others who are hurting. We ask for great miracles for this hurting world. We pray for every leader in your church, both here and around the world. Give them your wisdom and discernment as they lead. We pray that their hearts would be directed first to you and that they would recognize where their true help and strength come from. We pray for their families. Give them great strength, protection, and grace for the days ahead. We also ask you for the outpouring of your spirit to raise up those you've chosen to lead your church in the future. We pray for the outcome of the merger vote with Fresh Manna Fellowship. We desire to see your kingdom come, Lord. May your will be done, Lord Jesus. We pray for your church to have a love for your word and to walk in your wisdom, humility, and strength. Keep your words of truth planted firmly within us. Help us to keep focused on what is pure and right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. We pray for your protection against the attacks of the enemy. Remind us that this battle belongs to you, Lord. We ask today that you would fill us once again with your Holy Spirit. Unify all believers and may your spirit and power fill us with your joy, your wisdom, and your discernment as we go into all the world and make disciples, taking with us the message of the gospel of peace. We pray that you would move in a great way across our city, our province, our country, and our world, turning people back to you and drawing others to come to know you. Lord, we ask that you wake up your church and stir us into action. Help us not to stay silent, but give us courage to speak out and to do all the things through your wisdom and love. Bring honor to your name in these days, Lord, for you alone are worthy. Now we join in unity as your church to say the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, hi there. Didn't see you. You know, sometimes Ryan and I like to hide some things in each other's offices. And, but some of the things that we definitely don't want to hide are the things that are going on around here at SHBC. So why don't you check some of these things out? So this last week, the provincial government announced there'd be no changes to the current restrictions. So we're going to continue to worship online together as we wait for the current pandemic measures to be lifted. Thanks to everybody that came out to last night's prayer meeting about the potential church merger. Pastor Darren will be having more information about the church merger vote in his next update. And if you still have any outstanding questions that would help you in your decision, you can contact Pastor Darren. He'd be happy to talk to you about those. The vote on the church merger is limited to members only. So if you're interested in voting on this important church decision and want to become a member here at SHBC, 
there will be a one hour membership class on January 27th at 8 p.m. through Zoom. You can sign up for this class by emailing the church office or emailing Pastor Darren. Hey, there's a note from the well on Ryan's desk. And it's inviting the women to come out to another testimony on Sunday, February 7th at 7.30 p.m. You can grab a cup of your favorite tea or beverage and log on to Zoom. And don't worry if you don't have any tea. Ryan has lots over here. I always grab this one. They're going to be hearing from Elena Drager that Sunday, and the Zoom ID is going to be emailed out and posted on the Wells Facebook page. If you wish to continue worshiping by giving, you can do so through e-transfer by using the email address giving at shbc.ca. You can log on to our webpage at www.shbc.ca and click on the giving portion of the page. Or you can come to the church office during office hours and drop off your tithe then. Let's pray. God, thank you for blessing SHBC with these gifts. I pray that they would be used with wisdom, integrity, and humility. Amen. Well, that's church life for this week, but it's time for me to get back to my office and do s Hey. Hey. Nothing, what's, nothing. What's going on? Nothing, it's fine.
Well, thank you, worship team, for that offertory. Well, last week we began a new sermon series entitled, We Are the Church. And we looked at kind of an introductory message that got us kicked off about what is the nature of the church and what is it that God has called us to do as followers of Christ now in the 21st century. And today I want to look at one of the hallmarks, one of the most distinguishing characteristics of the Christian church, and that is that we love one another. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we bless you. We thank you that you are love. And God, there's so much love contained in your scriptures. Lord, how you have loved your people uh, through the ages. Lord, thank you that you love us. And you care about us. And now I pray, God, that the meditation of our, of our hearts, Lord, um, would be pleasing to you. And I pray you would use my words, Lord. May they be your words. May you speak to your people. And may you bless our time in your word today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to begin this morning at the scene of the upper room described for us in John 13. Jesus has just arrived in Jerusalem for Passover, and he knows that the time has come whereby Judas will betray him. He'll hand him over to sinful men, and through Christ's death and resurrection, he will triumph over sin and death, and God the Father will be glorified through his Son. So an evening meal has been prepared for Jesus and his disciples at an undisclosed upper room. And while they're eating at the table, Jesus gets up and he removes his his outer garment and and he takes a towel and he takes a basin. And to the amazement of his disciples, he begins to wash their feet. This act of humble service becomes the backdrop to one of Jesus' most important truths about what defines the people of his church, the people of his kingdom. Well, Jesus calls us, not only his disciples, but he calls us to this new command, to obey his new command. And Jesus' commandment is recorded for us in John Chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. John 13, 34 and 35. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Well, Jesus is in a sense telling the 11 that up to this point, people knew you were my disciples because where I went, you went. We traveled together, we ate together, we served together, we laughed together, we dwelt together. But now the world will know you are my disciples by the way you love one another. So why does, why does Jesus classify this as a new commandment? After all, didn't Moses teach in Leviticus 19, 18 that we're to love your neighbor as yourself? Jesus has not negated the great commandments of love God and love your neighbor, but he's established a new covenant between God and humanity that requires a new commandment. Just as God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, as the primary terms of the agreement of of the old covenant between Yahweh and his people. Now Jesus is providing his disciples with a new covenant and, and a new commandment, not 10, but one commandment. In that just as Jesus loved us, we need to love one another. You see, God is forming for himself a new people, a a holy nation, as we learned last week, whose citizens are, are male and female, old and young. They're from every nation, from every language group. That's what God is doing and is continuing to do until the Lord returns for his bride, the church. And the defining characteristic of this diverse 
faith community we call the church is that we love one another just as Jesus loved us. Yes, we are the church and we believe Jesus is our Lord and we love one another. We believe Jesus is our Lord and we love one another. So what are the ways that we can obey Jesus' new command? Well, I want to cover three this morning in our time together. And the first one is is that we stay connected in Christ. We stay connected in Christ. And back over in the book of John, a little later that evening after supper, Jesus continues to teach the disciples and we read in John 15, 5, that this is, listen to what Jesus says. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart, apart from me. You can do nothing. And then over in verses 12 and 13 of that same chapter, Jesus says, my command is this. Love each other as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for their friends. So in order to possess um, a sustaining love for one another, we must stay connected. And it begins by staying connected with Christ. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You cannot love with a a new covenant love that Jesus is asking us to do, if we're not, if we don't have uh, Christ dwelling with us, and if we're not dwelling with one another. So how do we dwell or abide with one another in love? How do we do that? Well, I recently met with a prayer counselor uh, of mine, and I shared with them uh, how I've been feeling Uh, Like there are areas in my life uh, right now, maybe you feel like this too, where you're just missing some traction. You just can't seem to advance to that that next level. Like maybe in my studies or just like all of us, the battle overcoming procrastination um, and even in deepening relationships, just taking that intentionality to, to deepen relationships with those whom are close to you in your life. And so after we prayed together for some time, he asked me, Darren, how is your devotional life? Well, my first response was, yeah, it's okay. Uh, But then he took another run at me and he said, how is it really? Don't you just love insistent people? (laughs) Well, what his insistence helped me realize was that it's easy for me to be kind of just held up spiritually by the constructs of my role as a pastor. For instance, I can be leading prayer meetings and doing Bible studies and preparing for messages, and that's all great, but that's not necessarily personal time with God. And then my prayer counselor said to me, Darren, if, if you aren't having consistent daily devotions, I'm not talking about in a legalistic way, just I want to be with the Lord. I want to be with him and hear from him and commune with him on a daily basis. And if you're not having consistent daily devotions, then you're not going to experience the power of the Spirit and Christ's Christ's presence and his, his resilience so that you can resist temptation, so that you can break habits of procrastination and even self sabotage. And you won't be able to love others with Christ's love in a growing capacity because it's very difficult to give something you don't have or you haven't experienced yourself in a, on an ongoing basis. So for the last two weeks, I've been getting up earlier and I'm doing, uh, I do my morning routine and I've added uh, 20 to 30 minutes to read the scriptures. I went to bought me a, a new journal for Christmas. So I've been I've been recording notes in, from my readings and from my prayers in the journal, and I'm praying. And you know what? I'm beginning to sense God's power in, in very tangible ways, in, in various uh, areas of my life. Folks, in order to love one another, 
We must begin by staying connected in Christ. And not only that, but we really need to practice, put into practice real love, real love. Both Paul and John teach us that that love is not, it's not just this passive kind of sentimental niceness. it's, It's all about real people, about real life, because love does. It's active. It's like a verb. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices. Isn't that beautiful? It rejoices with the truth. Some ways, sometimes the best way that we can love is to lovingly share the truth with somebody or receive it. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. This is the kind of love that comes from God. And Paul says it never fails because it's from God. And I say, amen. Let this kind of real love that is seen in Jesus be seen in us as a church. Well, another way that we obey Christ's commandment to us to love one another is that we share a common life. We share a common life. In Acts 2, verses 42 through 47, Luke describes how the early church shared their lives together. They really did. Um, The church began in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 people came to Christ after Peter preached his first sermon. He just knocks it out of the park, and the Holy Spirit's just, just breathing through him into the hearts of people, and they're slain or they're just cut to the heart, and they're, they're repenting, and they're coming to Christ. And then after that, new people were being added to that number of 3,000 daily. So obviously, in that, that, that first church in Jerusalem, the needs were significant, and they were diverse in nature. But the people devoted themselves, we read, to the apostles' Bible teaching, Uh, They met together in each other's homes. They broke bread together. They prayed together. They also kept meeting at the Jerusalem temple to worship, to worship God together and to to dwell together in in prayer, to lift up holy hands in prayer and and to pray in in love. And And they shared a common life because Jesus said, a new commandment I give you. To love one another. I have loved you as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all people will know you're my disciples if you love one another. Well, one of the things that uh, I have found difficult during COVID 19, this COVID 19 pandemic, is that we're, we're unable to freely meet in person with each other mass off, um, to see each other's faces, um, to enjoy each other's company. I, I just really have missed that. And I realize that this too will pass. But I miss so much worshiping together in person and sharing meals together as a church family and just going over to one another's homes for life group and just, you know, hanging out in the backyard and having coffee together um, golfing together with my buddies from church, um, playing hockey together. I mean, we all have different things that we miss. Yet even in, in this limited capacity, we can still pick up the phone and we can still meet together through Zoom um, like we did last night in our prayer meeting and on participating in Sunday online worship service or, or even go for a walk with one another um, and certainly, certainly um, we can spend more time together as families. Well, when we look at the example of the Jerusalem church in the book of Acts, we need to realize that <laughs> like, this is not some kind of Christian communism. 
um, people still had their own homes and a responsibility to steward what God had entrusted them. But by the Spirit's prompting, people recognized that one of the ways, and there are many, uh, that they could love one another is by sharing material belongings with one another. And as each person was led in their heart by the Lord, not out of obligation because we know the Lord loves a cheerful giver, people gave to one another in um, small and thoughtful ways and in huge um, sacrificial ways as well. Here's a recent example at SHBC of how we have... um, experienced that kind of love shared. Just before Christmas, someone who doesn't even attend our church (laughs) gave a large gift to our benevolence fund, which is a fund that uh, people give to, usually over and above their normal giving, just so that funds can be distributed out to other people in the community, the local community, and in the church to help with, um, with, with needs that they might have because of financial shortfall. And so this individual, uh, this family, came and they gave a large gift to the Benevolence Fund, like lots of zeros. And they said the Lord had blessed them financially and they wanted to bless others in our congregation, in our congregation and the local community who were struggling financially. Wow. So right at that same time, someone in our church had just received word that their family, whom they've been separated for several years, could now come and join them in Canada as permanent residents. Uh, But the flight costs were very high. Yet because of this other person's generosity, we were able to help cover part of the cost of that family's flight to Canada. Isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord. So as the Lord directs you, I encourage you, to find meaningful ways, big and small, to share with one another. Let's face it, I mean, financial gifts are great, but there are so many other practical ways that that we can practice a shared life together with our brothers and sisters in Christ here at Still Heights. One of the simplest is just taking the time to genuinely listen, just to lovingly listen to one another. And of course, to forgive one another. True love expressed to one another, it helps cure us. It helps cure us from from things like selfishness and pride and bitterness. (laughs) When we love, it helps us to become more self-aware of our own character flaws that we need to work on through God's truth and through God's grace. God has given us Amazing opportunities to share his love with others as we consider this potential church merger with Fresh Manna Fellowship. I believe that the number one determiner as to whether our potential merger will be successful or not will be whether we really love one another as Jesus has modeled for us. You see, we, we all have many opportunities to put into practice the Apostle Paul's teaching to the church at Ephesus. And we read about this in, Ephes- or sorry, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Ephesians 4, chapter 2 through 6. Or, yeah, chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. You see, when we lovingly minister to one another and we worship together, we demonstrate that we are alive in Christ. 
The church is all about Jesus and his people and the mission of the gospel. We're not um, to love the bureaucracy of the church or just the programs of the church or even the church facility. These are all important, but they are secondary. Lest we be accused of being just lifeless churchgoers, practicing a lifeless religion. We need to love one another for we've been born again. Without love, then the church becomes this this just kind of lifeless fraternity of man. Like Samuel Taylor Coleridge describes in his famous poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Quoting from his poem, Corpses man the ship, dead men pull on the oars, dead men hoist the sails, and dead men steer the vessel. Folks, we are no longer dead in our trespasses, our sins. We are Christ's church. We've been made alive in Christ. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Let the banners of Christ's love and his, his gospel just billow out like sails from this church by the Spirit's power. Folks, I believe it's time to lose to lose sight of the shores for Christ and to trust him, to really trust him in this new kingdom assignment. And in order to start it, and I'm talking about this merger, in order to start it, we need to welcome our brothers and sisters from Fresh Man. We need to welcome them on board. And we need to work together in that 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 fellowship, that koinonia that the early church had, and we need to work together in the spirit so we can really, truly bring the gospel message and live it out in North Edmonton and to the nations and make disciples as Christ has commanded us to do. My brothers and sisters of Steel Heights, we are the church, and Jesus has commanded us to love one another by obeying his new command, by staying connected in Christ, by practicing real love and sharing a common life. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, thank you. In your wisdom, Lord, as you laid down the blueprints for the church, God, through the ages, God, your gospel continues to triumph over sin and evil. And Lord, our greatest testimony, our greatest witness will always be to love one another as you loved us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Help us not to just be indifferent to one another, but Lord, help us to to have a godly concern, even just to start there, God, a godly concern for one another. Even if all we can do is just pray for one another. Lord, help us not to be indifferent and to follow that pathway towards hatred. Lord, help us to be concerned about one another and follow that pathway to deeper and deeper expressions of love. Lord, we pray for your will, for your kingdom to come here at Still Heights. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
said amen whoa and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen and all the people said amen whoa and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love Amen. Well, as we close our service, I just have a confession to make. I really, really, really miss you guys, and I would have loved to have you here in the sanctuary as we close with that song to see your faces, see your smiles. But the Lord bless you, and may Christ be with your spirit this week, and may you experience his peace and his joy in these uncertain times. We know that God is still in control, and we can say amen Amen. to that. So go in that knowledge and that grace this week. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Bye for now.